Hello friends, my name is Christopher and I love gardening. Two years ago I made this very long arched trellis that is now covered in all sorts of growing things and I made a video on it and it has since become very popular, particularly in the June through September months. It has garnered a lot of questions and interesting comments over the years and so this video is answering the best questions or the most frequently asked questions and responding to some of the more interesting comments that I've gotten and I'm also showing you some of the upgrades that I've made since I originally built it. So, let's dive right in. <laughs> Question number one in no specific form is what is this made of and how much did it cost? I'll be very specific. PVC, right? So it's three quarter PVC, a couple of T and cross joints, and then this blue stuff is called PEX pipe, P-E-X. Uh, it's about a half an inch. I got half an inch so it would just fit right into this three quarter hole. Um, several of you have made comments saying that the PEX tube would be cracking after the first winter. It's been two winters now and it hasn't cracked. As for cost, it really doesn't pay for me to talk about cost because depending on how long you build yours or how tall, that'll dictate how many pieces of PVC you need. Um, so just figure it out. But PVC is cheap and oftentimes you can find it on the side of the road or on your Facebook marketplace or ask your neighbor. Odds are people buy extra and it just sits there and people are ready to get rid of it. That's how some of these pieces came into my possession. The next question is, did I cut the PVC at the bottom so that it would get into the ground easier, fit in, as opposed to just having the blunt circular end? No, I did not. However, if you wanted to cut it, it would certainly make it easier and you'd probably be able to drive it down a little bit deeper. When I was putting these in, I didn't put them straight into the ground. I put them kind of at an angle so they were bending in like this. And then when I put the pecs, I uh, bent it out a little word, outward like this. It, it just made sense when I was doing it and it's added to the strength of the whole project. I didn't want to put them in straight and then have it bowing like this in the center. So putting them in at an angle like this had them bow, I guess, to a nice 90 degree plumb straight up and down spiel. But more importantly than that, uh, the best upgrade that I made to this was the second summer after I used it, I built buttresses inspired by uh, what Il Duomo in Milan and uh, all the other wonderful uh, Catholic churches of the age in Europe. Uh, these buttresses have been the best piece of support that I've done for this. Uh, some of the more negative comments were that this thing would topple over after one big gust of wind and it didn't but it certainly had sway to it. So the buttresses here make a nice triangle of support that extends up halfway of the structure and here I am adding decent force to it and it's really not going anywhere. These buttresses have worked perfectly, it hasn't swayed, and it certainly hasn't collapsed. Another viewer had asked whether I was going to disassemble this over the winter time, um, not knowing whether it would hold up. Some people have said that uh, in a harsh Canada winter or a very wet snow Colorado winter um, that this would collapse. The very first year I built it, I did disassemble it, but after I installed the buttresses in 2019, I didn't disassemble it. So that means last year um, it stayed up. In, I mean, we're in Wisconsin, we get lots of snow and ice build up, you know, just like everybody else in these nice cold states. Um, this was packed with snow, but it didn't really accumulate for long. It would go down between the spaces here. The paneling I have is two inches by three inches, so a little bit of sunlight, it would melt, and it would just go right on through. I didn't have any problems with it collapsing. Also, I haven't had any problems with the PVC or the PEX tube cracking. I did say that the first year I took it down for winter, but I stored it right behind you in the corner outside, and it was you know, covered in snow and ice and it did all the expanding and contracting, all the things that you might be worried about. To tell you the truth, I was more concerned about solar radiation on this, all the sun getting and heating the plastic and lowering the life cycle of the PVC, more so than the hot and cold, but it's, it's covered so nicely by foliage that I don't think that that's as much of a problem as I was expecting. So there are no visual defects as far as cracking from the winter. 
Another viewer commented, once you get weight on the top, you may need to add some cross ties to keep the sides from spreading, then duck your way through. Um, I didn't experience any sort of bad drooping or a need for cross tie in my second year. Again, for some reason, the buttresses solved everything. The very first year I had this, as you can see, I've got beans coming down here now. I had a lot of bigger fruit on here, particularly squash, you know, decent sized squash like this. And if they were growing right in the middle where it was coolest for pictures, you know, um, it did pull in the middle and I had to do some cross bracing. You can see that it's bending a little bit right here. What I was trying to do this year was to counterbalance this so it had things growing evenly on both sides. And it's definitely better than uh, last year or the year beforehand. I think it's more an issue with um, learning to balance both sides than anything else. I hated doing the cross bracing. I absolutely did. Um, and I haven't had to do it for the last two years just because I've been better about what I plant and use in this trellised space. That being said, sometimes I still do have to uh, duck because, especially at the end here, these are, um, you know, beans. I think these are beans. These are beans and creeping, or not creeping Charlie, but morning glories and a whole bunch of other things just kind of intertwining. At the end, they can't climb anywhere, so they make a fun little nest and you have to duck. But that's part of the magic of the garden, guys. Let's talk about cattle panels. We've got both ends of the argument here, from dude just get some cattle panels, to I think you did yourself a favor by not using cattle panels. And uh, to tell you the truth, when I was originally considering building this structure, I wanted to use cattle panels. However, I couldn't find them available in my area. Since then, I've found some, you know, maybe 30 minutes out in more rural settings, but they came in 16 foot sections only. And I didn't have, at that time, maybe the right tool to cut it, or I certainly didn't have a truck that I could carry those in. Um, so that would have been a different problem to solve. So the reason I didn't do cattle panels was because of availability and transportation. And I'm, I'm happy with what I have. It's nice and light and it fits into my space. If you have cattle panels in your area and access to them, easy transport, I mean, yeah, do it. They're like, you know, quarter inch. I think some of them are like six by six squares though. So you, pros and cons to that, you can reach right on through. That's definitely a pro, you know, your fruit has more space to grow, but um, I don't know, it might be harder for some plants to climb the trellis. I don't know. If it were an opportunity for me, I would have gone that way. Am I dissatisfied that I didn't? No, certainly not. If you have a chance, I'd certainly give it a try. But like anything else, there's gonna be pros and cons to it. In conclusion, two years later, I'm very satisfied with this trellis. It was a fun project and it turned out well. A few simple improvements, you know, modifications have made it more structurally sound. I've also added many more zip ties in there to keep them from rubbing on the PEX tube or falling off, etc. And in the future, I might even add some bigger posts on the corners to add even more structural rigidity. We shall find out. It doesn't crack, it doesn't fall in the wind, it doesn't collapse in snow, and it looks pretty darn cool covered in leaves and then walking through that magical tunnel. It's exactly the effect that I was going for. I hope this answers some of your questions, especially if you just came from that video from 2018. Um, this is a nice immediate follow-up, and I lost 40 pounds since the filming of that video, so I know I look a little different, but the garden looks great, and you can see it in full bloom. Thanks a lot for watching. Check out the other gardening videos, subscribe if you're new, and uh, have a good day. Happy gardening. Bye.